When it comes to the King Gizzard folklore, I'm going to propose that no character has ever been more central than the figure known as Han Toyumi, because in my opinion he is the largest connector between the elms and is a crucial focal point towards the understanding of the Gizverse as we know it. But how is this person so important, and why does his name sound like a Yakuza mob boss? Well like most of what's in the series so far, let's dive into the visual clues provided and let the band give us an introduction to who Hantoumi is. Hello, my name is Hantoumi. I am a cyborg. Born, if you may call it that, in a world that is dense and black. As we can see, Hantoumi is a cyborg, but his name is also a clever anagram for the word humanity. And since the song later describes how Han Toomey was one of the last humans to become a cyborg, the name is symbolic for how all of humanity has been converted to a digitalized format, and hence the rearranging of the letters. When speaking of the digital, the track continues on to inform us of how these changes have led to a new age of human civilization, an era only known as... After the events of Nonigon Infinity, we are left with images of an apocalyptic scenario that has a barren wasteland filled with creatures such as people vultures, big fig wasps and absolute chaos going about. But the track is not only portraying how all of humanity has changed as a response to the apocalypse, but also as to why it has, and it provides further confirmation that all of mankind has done so by turning themselves into their cybernetic counterparts. This is where we will leave the fate of humanity into a world that has seen humans turning to become cyborgs as a form of a last resort, and one that is yet to face many more challenges ahead. To further paint the picture of this new world, we get the track called Doom City from the band's album Flying Microtonal Banana, which also portrays the scene of the nuclear fallout that is left from the apocalypse created by Nonigon Infinity. Once 
Once again, we get a biblical reference to the term infirmament, which is related to a Genesis passage and describes the creation of a new world. A world that is built from the old and one that features gigantic rattlesnakes and even an earth that is melting, which is another name for a track of the album. Coming back to the album Murder of the Universe, we can put the final pieces of the puzzle that give us this apocalyptic scenario, with tracks titled and that also introduce altered beasts, lords of lightning, and even Balrogs upon this new world. You shall not pass! So altogether, the band have truly set the scene for an earth that has entered a dire phase of its existence, and one that mankind has created by opening the door through Nonagon Infinity and releasing the apocalypse as we come to know it. Impertinent and ignorant. Deathless and restless. Cold, contrite coward. Digitized satellite. Augmented entities. Unremembered God. In a world run by chaos, Hantomi returns to inform us of how it craves two human desires of its past, to not only have the ability to die, for which it can't given it as a cyborg and is therefore immortal, but to also simply just have the power to, I guess, vomit. I'm okay. Now to vomit might seem quite absurd at first, but it's more than likely a reflection of mankind turning the world around us into some form of sickness from our actions. And perhaps this is commentary on how humanity can turn the most beautiful aspects of our world into those corrupted or heinous abusers. But for Hatomi, the ability to create sickness is impossible because it can't vomit. So instead, it decides to make a machine from a human that allows it to experience the sensation. And this leads into a track from the album known as Soy Protein Munt Machine. So I built a machine, a human machine. I made it with steel and soy protein. But apart from being one hell of a name for a song, soy protein mutt machine also cleverly refers to how the machine is made from a human, given protein are the physical blocks that are present in both muscle and blood molecules. And the song's lyrics about being built with steel could just be an analogy for making the bones that also form the human machine-like structure. But as quickly as it's built, the human's brain is uploaded to Han Termi, which is an interesting reference to the song Robot Stop from the album Nonagon Infinity that potentially foreshadowed these upcoming events. From here, Han Tumi becomes almost abusive as this creature who had no love for the creator becomes corrupted and overturned, with Han Tumi's urges to feel the sensation of vomiting growing more and more, eventually fusing with the machine completely. It then continues to expand, eventually becoming entirely vomit itself, one that can even crumble castles, which is potentially a nice nod to the previous album I'm In Your Mind Fuzz, which shows a castle at the very top of the cover art, seemingly about to be destroyed by an ominous looking hand that hangs overhead. But this picture of an inner sea of vomit is more so evident from the album art for Murder of the Universe, which shows a new state for Han Termi, as a robot that is fused with a vomit spewing human like machine who goes on to become everything and everyone as referenced throughout the last half of the final song. I am electric. I am on fire. This is sex. I am everyone and every zero. 
One million. I am supercharged, flaming cube, storming every cell, molecule and atom I can find. I'm cancer. I am flying. I am a rainbow unfurling across the sky. The line about taking over every zero and every one is referencing to the idea that the universe can be written in the computer code known as binary, which is made up of zeros and ones. But it's also a nice link to what we saw in Nonagon Infinity with the song Invisible Face that also described the universe as being a machine. And then by taking over every atom and every molecule that has ever existed, we get final confirmation that Han Termi has used this enormous power for the worst as now essentially murdering the entire universe as we know. After Murder of the Universe, we enter the album known as Sketches of Brunswick East and get one of the last appearances of Han Toomey in the Gizverse so far. This occurs very briefly in the song Tezata, in which Han Toomey is introducing itself as a god to several different people and he's trying to get them to remember some time in their past. What's interesting is that Tezata itself is another spelling for the word Tizata, which is a style of Ethiopian music and means nostalgia or memory, and the way it's chanted appears very familiar to that you would see for someone worshipping a god, for which Han Tomi has already declared itself so from Murder of the Universe and now with sketches of Brunswick East. But the cover art of the album also shows the suburb of Brunswick East itself, which is in Melbourne, Australia, and is the city that the band and their own studio label Flightless Records originate from. In it, it depicts buildings of decay and rabble remains with cranes for construction also in place. Now this could be cleverly signalling the rebuilding of the old world that was collapsed from the events of Nonagon Infinity, and with Han Termi trying to help people remember some time in their past, you could also be referencing to that idea of the old world, just before the murder of the universe and the consumption of everything that they've ever known and a welcome to Han Termi's altered plan. To add to the themes of the events from Nottingham Infinity, we also get the track from the album known as Countdown, which describes people waiting for probably what is Judgment Day or D-Day, and gives a subtle notion of who this figure is that is deciding the fate of mankind. I believe that line, humanity is staring at me, is cleverly referring to Han Termi itself, given we've mentioned how its name is an anagram of humanity. So Han Termi is looking down at the people that are left from the apocalypse and more than likely about to provide final judgement, just as any god would. As the album comes to a close, we reflect on another glimpse of the Gizverse and reach the conclusion for what we know for Volume 2. Until, of course, we get to Polygon to Wonderland.